All right, so let's fly through some tips on using RISE as a presentation tool. Here's actually a presentation I did for a previous conference. And one of the things I did is I had my presentation I was doing in PowerPoint. I said, well, why not just use RISE? So I saved my PowerPoint slides as image files, and then I brought those image files in here. So generally when I'm framing up a presentation in RISE, you know, a PowerPoint slide or Google Slides, the presentation is going to have a fixed aspect ratio. So you're kind of constrained by the slide dimensions. With RISE, one of the benefits is that the content flows. So you can really have unlimited content. So you're not constrained by the slide and people tend to put too much information on the slide. So I took these PowerPoint slides, put them in here, and then I'm using the continue button here to do two things. One is it kind of stops the content because I can't I can't scroll past the content until I click continue button. And then using the slides, I can talk, but if I had information under here, I don't want you focusing on that. So I can use the zoom feature and I click, now I'm isolating the content that's on the slide. So you see just the image. And then when I'm done, I can click and I can move on. And then I use the continue button also as a prompt, right? That lets me know, okay, what's, what's my next thing coming up here, right? Or maybe it's a question I can ask the audience. And I click and now I've got some more information, right? Same thing, I've got information. I can isolate it. Like, I don't want you focusing up here. I don't want you reading this down here. I'm gonna focus here on the image and then we're done. So think about how you wanna bracket your content and the continue button's a great way to kind of stop and continue going through the content. Here's a good one where, you know, I would pose a question to the audience. Um, they would say whatever, we'd have our discussion, and then I'd expose the content we were gonna talk about. So a lot of neat things you can do there. Um, when you're working in RISE, uh, what you wanna think about is the, the blocks available to you and which blocks make the most sense if you're thinking about this as a presentation tool. Uh, a couple things. Just because the blocks are interactive doesn't mean you can't use them for the presentation. Uh, for example, you might want to do something. Let's just build a couple of examples here. Um, you can use interactive features. It's just you're the one who has to do the interacting. So you're in a Zoom meeting or you're presenting on stage, right? So you can use interactive features and just have to figure out how you want to use those. So one example could be you could use a flashcard and so you could present a question on the flashcard and then have a conversation about it or what do you think is the right answer and then you flip and then you have that on there, right? So that's you're kind of engaging the audience that way. Use a sorting activity, that's another interaction. Uh, let's see if we have a sorting activity. Maybe you have some content and you ask them, what do you think is the right answer? And then they tell you where to sort the content too. And then you use, just use this activity as a way to engage uh, the audience and have some conversation with them. And then you can do things like uh, this checklist. This is a good one. So maybe you have a, a number of points you're making and as you're making the point, you just click on that and that lets the person kind of see where you're talking about and kind of gives them a sense of progress through uh, what you're saying. So just because you have interactive features doesn't mean you can't use those in the presentation. And then one last consideration uh, is the settings. So if you'll notice when I preview this here, um, and we're in here, I have the sidebar, it's turned off or it's closed, but it's available. And I like using the sidebar and making it available, but I keep it closed to start because then I can focus here. But some people turn off the sidebar, which you can do. Uh, but if you turn it off, you don't have access to it. So having the sidebar lets me jump to a specific point in my presentation. The other thing is I have a search feature. So maybe, let's just come up here. Maybe somebody is asking me a question and I want to jump to a slide, but I can't remember what, where that slide was. You know, I could always type in something. Maybe it's the 3C. Oops, it's 3C. Where is that at? And then I can say, oh yeah, it was right here. And then I can uh, jump to that point in the content. I can turn the sidebar off if I want to and do that. And if you want to play around with those settings, just come up here, go to settings and then navigation. And then inside of navigation, you can see you have the option to close, 
open, close, or no sidebar. And again, I like to start with closed. You don't want to restrict the navigation because that doesn't let you jump around. And then one other thing I would say is a consideration as well as the animations. Uh, when you're in the course, uh, you can have block entrance animations. I have those off. Let's turn those on. Uh, sometimes they don't kind of work with the way you you want your content to flow, right? So we go in here and then you can see kind of the way that content animates in. I may not want that animation, uh, so I turn that off. Um, the other thing is you don't have to do this presentation online. For example, you could publish your RISE course and then play the RISE course from your desktop. So you don't need to have the internet to actually do your RISE this type of presentation in RISE. You just need to build it and then save it as, uh, as a published file for the web and then you can access that from your local drive. The other thing that I think is a great advantage with using RISE like this is it's your presentation. A lot of times people share their presentation, but because you have this ability to add other uh, lessons in there and other assets and video and embed things, you could really make a really uh, resource rich a handout that you can add to the presentation and make available for the people who are attending that. Hopefully those tips help.